Okay, so I've done videos already that talk about the various differences in the caddies and also the fans. And now I thought I would do one on the heat sinks because I've had some questions lately on, um, you know, can I use this heat sink with this model and, you know, 35 and 65 watt, all those sort of things. So I thought I'd give kind of a, um, oh, sort of a, a trip over the, the various generations and show you the heat sinks and what can be used. Uh, or reused in, in the various models. So let's start with the first guy, the G1. This one by far is my least favorite to deal with. Um, this whole piece, in essence, is the heat sink. I mean, you've got the, the, the base thing that does all the work, but then you've got this metal shroud that's all part of the, the same package and underneath it is the fan. And no matter what I do when I'm dealing with this, I always end up getting thermal all over my fingers, and it's just a mess. So it's not one of my favorites to deal with. Um, this particular one is very unique to the G1. You cannot use it anywhere else. And uh, it is nice, though, that it is copper. Uh, since the G1 only had a 35 watt model, it didn't have a 65. It's kind of nice that on the 35 you get uh, the copper heatsink. Uh, with the the again the fan fits underneath here. Uh, the cable kind of threads through here. Now you're going the other problem with this heatsink is you're going to have to remove it and the fan in order to get to the M.2 slot on the G1, which makes it, again, very inconvenient to work with. Here we've got the, uh, the G2 heat sink. This is the aluminum one, which uh, generally comes on the 35 watt, and here is the copper that generally comes on the 65 watt, and pretty much has to be on there because when you're dealing with the non-T processors, you need uh, the additional cooling. They are interchangeable. Uh, you can take the copper and put it on to a 35 watt without a problem. The holes are the same. You can also take this and put it on a 705 G3. Since the 705 G3 is basically just a G2, uh, an 800 G2 repackaged and, you know, using an AMD processor. So those will fit uh, inside of the others. These will not fit in further generations. You cannot take a G2 heatsink and put it in a G3. You look at it and it looks very similar but it's just different enough with the holes that they will not fit. See the backs. Um, no, I noticed with this one, it seemed to have some additional padding on the side. I don't know if that's universal, uh, you know, if you're always going to find that. But, you know, that's nice. I guess it's, it's to, um, as far as airflow and um, trying to insulate it as much as possible. Next, we've got a... Um, a G3 heatsink, and if I bring back the G2, if we look at it, they do look very similar, but the holes don't quite match up, and that's why uh, it's not going to fit. So with the G3, you can, of course, use it on a pro desk, you could see that they're identical, and then those are going to line up. So those are, you know, those those you can use on not just on the elite desk, but you can also uh, change them out with the pro desk. Uh, these do come in the copper if you have the 65 watt. I have a 65 watt heat sink on 
the computer that I use uh, to actually edit this video and, and do everything on it. Um, it's a 35 watt system, but I've put into it the uh, copper heat sink. It seemed to help a little bit in terms of the heat uh, dissipation. Um, dissipation, I guess that's the word. Um, and, you know, the thermals, but it wasn't dramatic. And um, I believe I even have a video on that that, that kind of talks about it. Let's look at the G4 and compare it to this guy. Here's our G4. Very different looking than the G3. I mean, just, just the shape alone. You know, we've got this little notch here. Um, obviously, the, the holes aren't going to match up. Um, this will also come in the copper uh, for your 65 watt. And also, they have um, what's known as the 95 watt. Um, now, the 95 watt, it actually has uh, even larger heat sink. So the, it it has this, it has almost a secondary heat sink here, and then a, a fan, additional fan here that goes into a, um, a pinout. I'll try to include a uh, picture so that you can see, let's see, we'll make a little room for it. Somewhere around here we'll put a picture. Um, those are very hard to find, those uh, 95 watt heat sinks. You can find the copper uh, in these uh, if you want, again, to take your 35-watt system and have a little additional cooling. The heat sinks for the G4 are the same for the G5. So those are interchangeable between the two. And uh, the, you know, the, the parts, the G5 motherboard and setup is basically just a G4 that was rebranded and allowed... Um, for 9th gen um, CPUs, you know, even though, of course, you could put 9th gen in a uh, G4. So hopefully this will kind of give you a little idea on the heat sinks and what to look for if you want to buy an additional one. Let's say you get a, sometimes you get these bare bones that are so bare bones that they don't even include the heat sink. Personally, I would, unless you're saving a whole lot of money, I would always make sure to get at least your bare bones so it's got the heat sink and fan. So that way, yeah, you may have to get the CPU and put on the thermal and all that sort of stuff, but at least you're not hunting for these. It can sometimes run you, depending on what you're looking for. I know, especially, I I've been trying to find a G4 heat, uh, copper heat sink, and they're tough. And you might end up paying, you know, 25, 30 bucks for it when you could have just gotten it as part of a uh, bare bones. Um, you know, if you're looking for a bare bones uh, 65 watt, you could at least get all the parts. You could get the, um, you know, both the, the, the fan, the heat sink, the extra fan, perhaps for the caddy and also the vented hood. And maybe then you could take all that and move it to your 35 watt, something like that. But yeah, I, I try to get them if you can, any of your units with the heatsink built in.